What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Chicky Jim at Full Grip Games. This past weekend was the third qualifier for the Limitless Online Series. With over 1,100 participants in this event, it was a massive online endeavor hosted by Limitless. So major props to the crew there for hosting a smooth event. The winner has been crowned Kim Pobega with his Pikachu in Zekrom Tag Team GX deck. In fact, there were four Pikaroms that finished in the top eight of this event. With Rebel Clash Legal, I think this event will Will serve as a great representation of the top decks to beat in our new Rebel Clash format. Taking a look at the final standings, there was a Pikaram mirror match in the finals with Kim Pobega facing off against Justin Farinango for the top spot. There was also two Dragapult VMAX decks that were able to finish in the top eight of the event. A lone Baby Blacephalon, which unfortunately got paired against the lone Mill player in top eight, was unable to overcome that matchup, and Mill finished in the top four of the event. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at each of the top eight deck lists and talking about unique deck building decisions that each player made, which may have helped them finish in the top eight of the event. Up first, we're going to be taking a look at Haruki Sadayama's top eight eight Dragapult VMAX list and right off the bat here I'm noticing the scoop up block Mr. Mime both of the Dragapult VMAX list in the top eight of the event played the scoop up block Mr. Mime which has an amazing ability it makes it so your opponent's Pokemon that have any damage counters on them and any cards attached to those Pokemon cannot be put into your opponent's hand most notably it stops Jirachi from being scooped up with scoop up net so if your opponent wants to play down a Jirachi then they're probably just going to end up losing that prize to Dragapult V Max's Max Phantom Attack, which places five damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. So that damage is able to stack up without fear of your opponent using Scoop Up Net to scoop that Jirachi back into their hand before it gets KO'd, thanks to the Scoop Up block, Mr. Mime. So I thought that was a really unique inclusion in both of the top eight lists. We still have a reset stamp in the list as well as four Marnies. So plenty of hand disruption as well. Haruki decided to go with just one copy of Giant Bomb. Some lists are playing more, some lists are playing less, but one Giant Bomb at least gives the deck some opportunity to snap back against a large attack dealing 180 damage or more. And then the Stadium of Choice, Power Plant, can be very good against Baby Blacephalon decks if you place that Power Plant and reset Stamp to low. It means that they're not going to be able to use Oracorio GX or Dedenne GX to draw out of that end game state, which is where Dragapult VMAX really, really shines, limiting the opponent's hand to low, and then sticking Power Plant can be a very powerful strategy. So I really like that inclusion there. Just one copy of Power Plant, though, means that it's not going to be the easiest to find. We do have two copies of Team Yelgrunt, which can help with the tempo in this deck. If you are behind on an energy attachment, or if you just want to set your opponent behind on an energy attachment, you can use Team Yelgrunt to return energy for from their Pokemon back to their hand. So Team Yelgrunt can help this Dragapult VMAX buy a couple of turns and skip ahead in energy attachments. Since it's not playing Malamar, that's going to be very important. can also help disrupt early Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia Altered Creation GX. Team Yelgrunt can stop them from ever getting the Altered Creation GX. It can also help against Pikram. If they go first and they get a turn one energy onto a Pikram, you can return that energy to their hand, set them back a turn. So I really do like that as well. And then there's also two copies of Mallow and Lana, which I think is fantastic for the mirror match. Just having two copies of Mallow and Lana in the deck means that you're going to be finding that card easier than if you only played one. And of course, with the Mind Report Mewtwo, you have the option to throw the Mallow and Lanas back into the deck, giving your Dragapult VMAX some serious survivability. In seventh place, we have Dennis Peroff with his Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX deck featuring Bolt Sun. Most notably about Dennis's list, he is the only player who played three Jirachi. There was one other list that played one Jirachi, and the top two lists did not play any. So Dennis decided to opt for three copies of Stellar Wish Jirachi and only one Bolton. So the lowest count of Bolton out of any of the top eight Picarom lists and the highest count of Jirachis, which of course are great for that Stellar Wish ability to help set the deck up. But I felt like a lot of the top eight Picarom lists were moving away from Jirachi and just relying on using Zara Aura's Thunderclap Zone to give the Pokemon free retreat, going into Boltund early, and setting up a coherent strategy from there. 
Also, Dennis opted to play two copies of Marnie and two copies of Professor Research, as well as three Volkner. Some lists were not playing Volkner at all, but Dennis kind of has a healthy mix of all of these supporters in his deck list, as well as Eldegoss V to bring any of them back to the hand at a moment's notice. Two copies of Boss's Order and one Great Catcher. Great Catcher was very popular in Picaram throughout the weekend, as well as two copies of Reset Stamp. Now, there is no Tag Call engine in this particular list, but still a big charm, which can be great for boosting Picaram's lowly 248. HP to a more manageable number of 270. Moving on to Lighter Iverson's sixth place Picaram list, you can see as we're moving up the rankings, we move down in the Jirachi counts. Lighter only playing one copy of Stellar Wish Jirachi, but a unique search engine in four radar, four quick ball. And I really like that with eight search cards. You have plenty of outs to go get yourself Eldegoss V from the deck or to Dene GX. Two copies of Boltund giving you plenty of consistency to switch into that Boltund for a turn one Electrify. So some great consistency options there. And then Tag Switch. Tag Switch was a very popular card in Picaram lists this weekend, giving you the option to bump two energy from one of your tag team Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon. And something really cool about Tag Switch is that you can move two of any energy. So you can actually move special energy, which is really neat. So you can attach speed lightning energy. And then unlike energy switch, which cannot move the speed lightning energy, the tag switch can move that speed lightning energy from your Picaram or your Raichu and Alolan Raichu to another Pokemon, which is really sweet. So we have a split there, the one tag switch and the two energy switch, which seemed really popular. We also have a copy of Mallow and Lana in the deck, which can really help against the Dragapult VMAX matchup. If you happen to find it, you could reuse it with the Eldegoss V, so I like that inclusion there. Two copies of Reset Stamp and an astounding 16 energy. We just take a look at that. Four speed lightning and 12 lightning energy. That is wild. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. But with Boltund V doing more damage with its Bolt Storm attack for each lightning energy you have attached to all of your Pokemon, I can assure you that not one time in the tournament did Dennis ever go to full blitz and be like, oh, I don't have enough lightning in deck with 12 lightning energy in the deck, as well as four speed lightning. I'm sure Dennis was always able to find the lightning for that full blitz attack. In fifth place was Alexis Hormozabal with his Baby Blacephalon deck. And the deck is pretty similar to a lot of lists that we'd seen swimming around before the Limitless Qualifier number three, most notably, still opting to include the Beastbringer and the Escape Board in the deck. Beastbringer, I think, is very good against a Pikachu in Zekrom Tag Team GX meta. So very clutch inclusion there. You can search it out with Adventure Bag. Beastbringer makes it so that if you knock out Pikaram, which is usually going to be Pikaram's lead, you get to take an extra prize. So you can take Four prizes on a Picaram, if that's your first knockout of the match. And then all you have to do is use Cramorant V Spit Shot to knock out a Bench Dedene or something like that. There's also not really any Gust in this list. There is no Fion and there is no Great Catcher and there's no Boss's Orders. So I thought that was really unique about this list as well. Not a lot of Gust options. But with the Beast Bringer, you do have more flexibility with your prize take since you can take a bonus prize on a tag team Pokemon. And then really your option to end the game is pretty easy with Spit Shot and then also Burst GX at your disposal. So Gus not entirely needed, but sometimes uh, can be a nice option. However, Alexis saw a ton of success finishing fifth place without any Gust in the deck. So major props to Alexis there. Only three copies of Switch, still opting to run that escape board, but plenty of Switch outs if you consider the fact that Scoop Up Net is a Switch, three Switch, and an escape board. So plenty of opportunities to switch Jirachis in and out of the active position. And Zacian V being featured in the list as well. I think Zacian is one of the best cards to open in a Baby Blacephalon list with its Intrepid Sword ability, just allowing you to tempo into the match and draw cards. A very consistent opener with Zacian V. And then Victini V with the Spreading Flames attack. You can attach up to three Fire Energy cards from Discard Pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Very good. 
for setting up a game winning spit shot or something like that if you happen to be low on energy because you can see uh, there is no Victini Prism Star either. So the Victini V kind of fulfilling that role as end game energy acceleration. If you happen to be low on energy, the Victini V can put three fire energy cards from the discard pile to one of the bench Pokemon, set up a game winning Cramorant. I also really like the inclusion of Galarian Zigzagoon in the deck. It can be great in the mirror match because a lot of times your opponent is going to be benching Oracorio GX for the Dance of Tribute of ability and you can use galarian zigzagoon in combination with spit shot to take out an oracorio gx in the mirror match which can be phenomenal you can also use it to ping a blacephalon gx you could double ping a blacephalon gx take it out in the mirror match with spit shot as well it also helps against v max pokemon instead of needing seven energy with fireball circus you can just use galarian zigzagoon to bring dragapult v max down to a more manageable 300 hp if you ping twice with headbutt tantrum in combination with the scoop up net and then just use a six energy fireball circus to take that knockout so great play from Alexis, Baby Blacephalon being represented here at fifth place in the event. Despite the existence of Boss's Orders and Dragapult VMAX, Wilmer Kohlberg Johansson was able to finish in the top eight of the event. We could see that this Sencino control list utilized Sky Pillar to prevent all effects of the opponent's attacks, including damage done to benched Pokemon, which means that Dragapult VMAX is not going to be placing five damage counters on any of these Sencinos, making it so that Wilmer could continue to use Make Do throughout the course of the game, so long as Sky Pillar was in play. We also have a Wondrous Labyrinth in the deck which can make it harder for the opponent to launch attacks making it so that all the attacks of non-fairy pokemon cost colorless more which of course includes wilmer's uh, pokemon as well but can be more disruptive for the opponents when they are strapped for resources since obviously the Sencino control list playing a whole suit of crushing hammers it is set on limiting the opponent's uh Energy attachments, also for Team Yelgrunt, means that uh, we're going to be bouncing energy back to the hand over and over. Getting that energy out of the hand with cards like Reset Stamp or even removing energy from the hand with cards like Mars. A well-timed Mars can be absolutely devastating if you bounce an energy back and then you can remove it with Mars. Slowly but surely milling the opponent out of resources. Boss's Orders is also great for a Sensino Control list since you don't actually have to rely on playing double custom catchers. Some Sensino Control list would play like three custom Custom catchers back in the day. Now we just have boss's orders, and now we can just rely on that one supporter card to drag up a Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field that maybe they don't want to have in the active so that you can get it stuck there, control your opponent's top deck with Chip Chip Ice Axe and slowly mill them out of the game with Bellelba and Bryson Man and of course the Lieutenant Surge strategy combination because you're going to be behind on prizes uh, every single game that you play since you don't actually take any prizes. We have the Bench Barrier Mute in the deck to help prevent nasty tag bolts and other bench damage so that's great as well as the sky pillar so a lot of protection against tag bolt gx which is going to be really tough for this deck to play around since losing two sencinos can be pretty pretty devastating especially early on if the opponent's able to pull off a quick tag bolt gx and a copy of fava to remove Pokemon tools or special energy from play can be very valuable. So a very consistent, straightforward, powerful Sencino control list here, of course, featuring Articuno GX for that Cold Crush GX. And we're seeing that the top control deck was not a mill deck after all. I mean, it does eventually mill the opponent out, but this is not the straightforward Sencino mills that we had seen in formats past. This is a Sencino control deck, which is a much slower and grindier strategy, but nonetheless very successful. Coming in third place is James Nerio with his Dragapult VMAX list. He plays a pretty thin Dragapult VMAX line. Only a 3-3 line. I've seen a lot of 4-3 lines, some even playing a 4-4 line. 3-3 
gives James some serious space for text and other shenanigans in this list, which I really like. So he plays the Unified Minds Dimension Breach Giratina, which allows you to remove a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon when you play this card from your hand to your bench, which can be fantastic in the Dragapult Mirror match. As we can see, James does not play any sort of Mallow and Lana, so no insurance against the Dragapult Mirror there. But the Dimension Breach Giratina can be very powerful in the Dragon Bolt Mirror Match to remove Horror Psychic Energies, decrease the amount of damage you take in return because there's going to be no Horror Psychic Energies. Also, setting your opponent behind on an energy attachment in the mirror can be absolutely huge. James also plays the Shadow Box Mimikyu, which can be great against Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX decks. It can also be fantastic against Picarom decks, shutting off Thunderclap Zone with the uh, Zara Aura GX can be extremely good. So I like that card in here as well. The Scoop Up Block, Mr. Mine, which we talked about in the other top eight list. Two Energy Spinner to just help boost the consistency of that turn one energy attachment to a Dragapult. And a ton of Switch cards. We've got three copies of Switch, two Escape Board, and four Scoop Up Net in this list. So a lot of pivot options and two Chaotic Swell. I think Chaotic Swell is just a phenomenal card in this format, especially against Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX decks. We've seen some of these Pikarom lists are playing the resetting whole Marshadow just to try and play around Chaotic Swell. But if you can stop... Uh, that Thunder Mountain Prism Star from coming down into play, that could be huge against Picarom. Also great against Baby Blacephalon decks. If you just play a Chaotic Swell down against Baby Blacephalon, the odds of them being able to draw extra cards with Heat Factory, yeah, almost impossible, right? It's not happening. Uh, the odds of them being able to use their Ultra Space to get the Blacephalons into play. Uh, most of the Baby Blacephalon lists are not playing Resetting Hole Marshadow. So this was a really clutch inclusion for, I think, both Picarom and and the Blacephalon matchups. Now, James also opted to play two copies of Galarian Zigzagoon with the Headbutt Tantrum ability, making it even easier for James to knock out Jirachis on his opponent's bench. So I think that two copies of Galarian Zigzagoon is amazing. You don't even need a scoop up net in order to use Dragapult VMAX's Max Phantom attack to take out a bench Jirachi, you can just bench your two Zigzagoons and Max Phantom and take it out in one fell swoop. So I really do love that as well. Three copies of Giant Bomb also giving this deck some added protection and aggression against decks like ADP Zacian, which was notably absent from the top eight of this tournament and also against big Boltund attacks as well. So I really like the inclusion of three Giant Bomb. Not a lot of these lists are playing Tool Scrappers, so Giant Bomb really has some potential to go the distance. And other than that, I think this is a very powerful list, and I really like the various tech cards that were paired here with Dragapult in James's top three list. Moving on to the finalist, we have Justin Farinango's second place Picarom list, which notably includes Tapu Koko V. Tapu Koko V have been cut from a lot of the other Picarom lists that we saw in the top eight of this event. But Justin relying on Tapu Koko for that thunderous bolt attack and free retreat can be very nice. Only two copies of Boss's Orders and a great catcher, so some pretty standard gust there. Four Volkner in the deck and no Marnie. So a more straightforward, uh, traditional, we might say, a more traditional supporter count from Justin's list. Four Research, though, and four Volkner, giving him plenty of draw outs. One copy of Tool Scrapper, which I don't think was played in any other top eight list. So a Tool Scrapper here, which can be very good for removing big charms, something crazy you could do with Tool Scrapper. So you could hit into a Pokemon or a Picarom with a big charm and uh, maybe just short of knockout, right? Maybe you're doing 250 damage to a Picarom with a big charm and then later on the match you find your tool scrapper you remove the big charm from the picaram it gets knocked out and then you can take all six prizes in one turn or something crazy like that so tool, scra tool scrapper is pretty cool in a format with a lot of big charm being played and we can see justin's playing two copies of big charm in his list but no guzma and hala in fact there was not a lot of guzma and hala or even tag calls being played in these top eight Picarom lists. But there is no Jirachi 
to be seen. So not a lot of Guzman and Hala, not a lot of Jirachi either. Just straightforward data change consistency with these Picaram lists, and they all play Eldegoss V, which can be phenomenal for getting bosses' orders back from the discard pile. Volkner research as well for research, and an Eldegoss means that you're going to have plenty of options to just draw through your deck. And something interesting about this particular Picaram list, we saw uh, the other Picaram list had 12 lightning energy and four speed lightning energy. This particular list has three speed lightning energy and nine basic lightning energy. So this is like the other side of the energy count. On one hand, we had that list with 16 energy in it, this list only playing 12. So there's some big differentiation between uh, energy counts in those two lists, which I think is really fascinating as well. Still opting for the two Boltons, two copies of Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX and Raichu and Alolan Raichu along for the ride as well. Still four copies of Switch, even though we are not playing any sort of Jirachi in the deck, which I think is really important, of course, because of Tandem Shock. You got to still play Switch in your Picaram list, not only for Tandem Shock, but also for getting your key Pokemon to the bench for an early Dance of the Ancients, also for switching Boltunt into the active position on the first turn of the game. And finally, we have Kim Pobega's first place Picaram list, besting over 1,100 other players in this online event to finish in the top spot it is a really unique list he plays a bunch of different supporters in here three copies of bosses orders as well as a great catcher so having plenty of gust option in the deck we've got guzma and hala in the list not a lot of other lists we're playing guzma and hala we've got the tag call engine as well two tag calls not all the other lists we're playing tag calls so that early tag call for the picaram and the guzma and hala to get the speed lightning energy in the thunder mountain can be very clutch we also have a mallow and lana here fantastic card for the dragapult matchup can really sure that matchup up it's almost an auto win if you just hit that mallow and lana at some point in the game then you're probably just winning the dragapult matchup if you hit it twice there's no way dragapults can win with marnie in the deck you have some nice hand disruption combined with reset stamp as well so some great options against maybe blacephalon decks things like that to really pair their hand down and take out key threats at the end of the game with tag switch in the deck you can pull off a tag bolt gx out of nowhere which can be insane against baby blacephalon reset stamp to low tag bolt gx knock out the oracorio gx i really like that play that this deck has at its disposal. Three copies of Dedenne GX is the absolute must have in these Picaram lists now. Three copies of Dedenne, giving you the option to data change over and over and over again. Three copies of Professor Research and one copy of Air Balloon, which is really unique just to give your deck some extra pivot. If you happen to start something that you didn't want to start, I like that Air Balloon is just a card you can get off of Guzma I love that Air Balloon is in this list as well. Not a card that we've seen in any other Picaram list so far, but pairs great with Guzma and Hala because you can tag call for the Guzma and Hala if you happen to start a Pokemon that you didn't want in the active position. Air Balloon is probably going to get that Pokemon out of the active unless it's a Picaram. It helps everybody else with their retreat, which is two or less. So unless you start a Picaram, Air Balloon can get you out of the active for an early Electrify. So I really love that card in this list as well. And kind of fitting somewhere in the middle, not the lowest energy count that we saw with the second place list, three speed lightning and nine basic lightning, but not the highest either, which we saw with the four speed lightning and the 12 lightning energy. We have kind of splitting the difference in the middle, four speed lightning energy and 10 lightning energy, which I think is a great place to be at. You're having plenty of lightning energy in the deck for your full blitz and your electrify. You're probably not gonna run out, but you also, aren't just flooded with lightning energy all the time. So I really love that energy count there, and I think that's probably the place we want to be at. Tag switch in the deck, big charm in the deck as well. Just one big charm, which you can use your Guzma and Hala to go get. And like I said previously, gives that Picaram a great 270 HP. Resetting whole Marshadow here as well to save the day against Chaotic Swell to allow you to get your lone stadium card, Thunder Mountain Prism Star, into play. And I think something that Picaram probably benefited from this weekend is not a lot of Shrine of Punishments seeing play with only one counter 
Connor Stadium in the deck. We also have the resetting whole Marsh out of to be fair, but Pikaram does sometimes struggle against uh, Shrine of Punishment. But uh, a lot of these Pikaram lists just playing the Thunder Mountain Prism Star, and I don't think the Shrine of Punishment probably saw a ton of play. I mean, there wasn't any in the top eight lists that we took a look at. So I think uh, the one Thunder Mountain Prism Star, a great call for the weekend. You don't actually need any other stadiums in the deck, especially with the resetting whole Marsh Shadow. And I think that in this particular meta, resetting whole Marsh Shadow is is better than a second stadium because this is searchable with quick ball and can help remove chaotic swell so you can just make way for your thunder mountain prism star to get that thing into play as quickly and efficiently as possible and then i really love the search options in this deck as well with four quick ball two electromagnetic radar and the two tag calls giving us plenty of options to go get our pokemon out of the deck on the first turn of the game which is one of pikaram's major strengths is that it does have that extra search available to it doesn't just rely on quick ball we've got radars and tag calls as well to go get early pikaroms to go get guzman and hala i think that pikaram all in all proved that it was the most consistent deck in the limitless qualifier number three this week and is the top deck to beat as it is right now in our new ultra prism through rebel clash format thank you all so much for watching the video make sure to like the video sub to the channel ring that bell and stay on the lookout for limitless qualifier number four which is going to be happening in the upcoming weeks you can check out the results from this tournament on limitless.com which is an amazing resource for tournament results and deck lists all the same major props again to the crew over at limitless for hosting a very smooth tournament i'm looking forward to trying out many of these lists on stream this week if you haven't already make sure to check out the twitch stream twitch.tv slash tricky gym where i stream live pokemon trading card game content every single weekday make sure to drop the channel a follow so you can stay up to date on when i go live and also make sure to check out fullgroupgames.com for all your trading card game singles as well as fullgroupcodes.com for instant ptcgo code delivery supporting the shop at fullgroup games directly supports the content that i create here on tricky gym y'all take it easy and have a fantastic day i'll catch you next time peace